In this video, we will demonstrate how to use the target setting tool for the transport sector. This Excel-based tool was created by the Science-Based Targets Initiative and is meant to help companies in transport sectors model science-based emission reduction targets for well-to-wheel emissions from transport activities. This tool is focused on passenger and freight land transportation and original equipment manufacturers, or OEMs for short. It can be used by passenger transport companies, logistics service providers, shippers, carriers, postal companies, road vehicle manufacturers, auto part manufacturers, and generally companies with large transport emissions in their value chain. A few caveats before we get started. This tool helps companies with transport emissions set well-to-wheel emission reduction targets that are aligned with the corresponding sector pathway. OEMs using this tool should consider that the pathways are for the use phase emissions in scope 3, category 11, and do not cover other emissions, including those associated with manufacture of vehicles. For manufacturers of passenger light duty vehicles, a separate Excel-based target setting tool for scope 1 and 2 emissions is available on the SBTI website. Additionally, this tool should not be used for aviation and maritime shipping related emissions. Separate target setting tools and guidance will be available on the SBTI website for these sectors. Finally, note that companies in the sectors covered by this tool may alternatively use the absolute contraction approach to set targets on scope 1 and 2 emissions and may set targets on scope 3 emissions using other accepted methods, including the absolute contraction approach, physical intensity, economic intensity, or supplier or customer engagement. More information can be found in the latest version of the SBTI criteria. The exception to this rule is road vehicle manufacturers or OEMs whose scope three targets on use phase emissions must meet the minimum ambition of the SBTI transport tool. This demo uses version 1.1 of the tool, but viewers should use the most recent version of the tool available on the SBTI website. Please also make sure to consult the latest SBTI criteria when developing targets. Where there are inconsistencies between this video and the latest versions of the criteria, target validation protocol, and or sector specific guidance, the latest available versions of the SBTI materials take precedence. Finally, before using the tool, make sure to read the terms of use and disclaimer in the intro tab. This tool allows companies with emissions in certain transport sectors to set well-to-wheel emission reduction targets using the Sectoral Decarbonization Approach, or SDA. It's available for certain transportation subsectors and allows companies with activities in such sectors to model targets using sector-specific decarbonization pathways. These pathways were developed using data from the detailed transport pathways in the International Energy Agency's Mobility Model. For more information on the methodologies used to develop this tool, consult the SBT transport guidance paper on the SBTI website. We will cover three examples in this demo, starting with a demonstration using an example company that owns and operates medium freight trucks. We'll start by selecting a base year and a target year. For this company, let's use 2018 and 2030. Now the tool asks us to enter well-to-wheel emissions. A quick note on terminology, well-to-wheel emissions are the sum of well-to-tank emissions and tank-to-wheel emissions. Well-to-tank emissions are the indirect upstream emissions related to fuel production and distribution, as well as electricity generation for electric vehicles. Tank-to-wheel emissions are the direct use emissions from fuel combustion. Well-to-wheel emissions therefore represent comprehensive coverage of the emissions associated with and therefore impact of transport activities. For more information, please consult the SBT transport guidance. Back to our example company that operates gas-powered medium freight trucks. Its well-to-wheel emissions in the base year, 2018, were 150,000 metric tons of CO2 equivalent. This includes the emissions from the internal combustion engines of the trucks and the scope three category three emissions from fuel production and distribution. In order to calculate the intensity pathway for this company, we need to enter the activity level in the base year. For this sector, the activity unit is ton kilometers. Our company transported 1 billion ton kilometers in 2018. 
For expected activity in the target year, we'll use the sector growth rate provided by the tool. Note that the tool displays results in two sections, 2DS and B2DS. These correspond to sector pathways that are aligned with a 2 degrees Celsius emissions scenario and a below 2 degrees Celsius scenario, respectively. As of the release of this video, targets covering scope 1 and 2 emissions must be aligned with B2DS at a minimum, and scope 3 targets must be aligned with 2DS at a minimum. For our company, which operates medium freight trucks, the relevant transport emissions are scope 1 and scope 3 category 3. Therefore, this target needs to be aligned with B2DS. This will correspond to an SBTI temperature alignment of well below 2 degrees. Later in this demo, we'll cover how this tool may be used for modeling targets on subcontracted or purchased transport emissions, that is, emissions that are outside a company scope 1 and 2, where companies may use the 2DS results. So for this company, we'll take the sector growth rate in the B2DS section, which is 21.08%. You can optionally fill in the additional fields for well-to-tank and tank-to-wheel emissions to view additional insights on expected reductions from the well-to-tank and tank-to-wheel portions. Let's do so for this company. Of the 150,000 tons making up the base year well-to-wheel emissions, 20,000 tons were well-to-tank and 130,000 tons were tank-to-wheel. Now we can see the results for targets modeled using the SDA for this sector. These results are based on the selected base year and target year, base year and target year activity values in units of ton kilometers, and base year well-to-wheel emissions. The table labeled Sectoral Decarbonization Approach B2DS shows the key results in terms of absolute and intensity reductions. For well-to-wheel, well-to-tank, and tank-to-wheel emissions, the table displays the minimum absolute and Im intensity reductions in order for the target to be aligned with B2DS. If our medium freight truck company submitted targets with at least this level of ambition, the company would pass ambition under SDA. The company could express their target or targets in absolute or intensity terms and should cover all well-to-wheel emissions with the target. The graphs show the time series of absolute emissions and emissions intensity. The graph on the left shows this particular company's well-to-wheel emissions pathway in blue and the sectoral emissions pathways in dotted lines. The graph on the right compares the carbon intensity pathways of this particular company and the sector overall. Note, however, that if this company wanted to be classified as 1.5C aligned, they would need to set targets, set their targets on scope 1 and 2 emissions using the absolute contraction approach with targets that amount to at least a 4.2% linear annual emissions reduction. This tool currently does not support modeling 1.5C aligned targets using the SDA. For setting 1.5C aligned targets using absolute contraction, refer to the general science-based target setting tool available on the SPTI website. Now we'll go through an example with a company with freight rail related emissions. Unlike our last example in which we were a company that owned and operated freight trucks, in this example we are a company that neither owns nor operates rail transport. This can be the case if there is transport of our company's goods or raw materials somewhere in its value chain. In these cases, our company does not own or operate the rail tracks or rolling stock, and the emissions associated with this transportation activity falls within our scope three inventory. Companies in these situations can use this transport tool to set targets on covered transport activities that are within their value chain. Let's get started. We'll keep the same base year and target year and enter the well-to-wheel emissions for the purchased transport service in the base year 2018. These 2,000 tons of CO2 equivalent do not correspond to all emissions of the railway company whose services we purchased, but rather only the emissions associated with the transportation of our goods in the base year. Note that as a best practice, companies need to input well-to-wheel emissions so that the tool calculates a target. This may require acquiring data from the transport service provider or subcontractor, but alternatively, the company can use emissions factors for this transport mode. Similarly, the activity in the base year and target year refer to the transport services paid for or associated with our company's activities. For our example company, this was 200 million ton kilometers in 2018. 
In this case, our company has internal forecasts that indicate its purchased rail transport in terms of number of ton kilometers will be 50% higher in the target year compared to the base year. So we will use the expected activity level of 300 million instead of using the default sector growth rate. As before, you can enter the disaggregated values for well to tank and tank to wheel emissions. We'll skip this additional step as we covered it in the previous example. Now we're ready to review the results. Recall that our example company is modeling targets on its purchased transport activities services with emissions falling into scope three. Therefore, the minimum ambition is determined by the 2DS scenario, but companies are by all means encouraged to exceed the minimum ambition. The results in this table show us that for our company, we need to reduce well-to-wheel emissions from purchased rail transport at least 37.1% per ton kilometer by 2030 from a 2018 base year. The graphs reveal that our company has a lower well-to-wheel emissions intensity than the sector overall, but still must reduce its intensity to converge with the sectoral intensity reduction by 2050. Our company might do so by engaging with its rail transportation supplier, improving logistics and routing, or procuring the services of less carbon intensive railway companies, including some who themselves have SBTs. In our last example, we'll model a well to wheel target for a manufacturer of new passenger light duty vehicles, also known as passenger cars. The tool allows these manufacturers to model targets to reduce the emissions associated with the use of their vehicles. These are the manufacturer's scope three emissions category 11, use of sold products. Unlike the previous examples, and in fact, unlike all other sectors covered by this tool, road vehicle manufacturers may not model scope three targets using the absolute contraction or other approaches and must model targets using the SDA. Additionally, unlike other sectors, their scope three targets must meet the minimum ambition for B2DS. We'll keep our base year and target year. Note that for this sector, the activity unit is no longer ton kilometers, but rather vehicle kilometers. This is calculated as the number of vehicles sold in the year multiplied by the average annual driving distance for those vehicles. For our example company, it sold 500,000 vehicles in 2018 with an estimated average annual driving distance of 20,000 kilometers per vehicle. Therefore, we enter 10 billion vehicle kilometers for the base year. Our company projects that in the target year, 2030, it will have an activity level of 13 billion vehicle kilometers. Finally, we need to enter the well-to-wheel carbon intensity in the base year. Note that this differs from other sector modeling inputs in that we are inputting the intensity itself and not the well-to-wheel absolute emissions. Check section 3.3 of the SBT transport guidance for how these emissions should be calculated. For our company, our base year intensity is 190 grams of CO2 equivalent per vehicle kilometer. The minimum ambition for targets covering these emissions is aligned with B2DS. For this company, the model shows that it must reduce the well to wheel intensity of its manufactured vehicles at least 41.2% by 2030 from a 2018 base year. We've now covered three examples for modeling emission reduction targets using the SBT transport tool. There are many other transport activities we haven't covered, including passenger transport activities and other types of freight and new vehicles. Feel free to explore on your own and consult the resources on the SBTI website for more information. And that's it for this demo of the transport target setting tool. If you run into any functionality issues or bugs, please get in, in touch with us at info at sciencebasetargets.org so we can continuously improve the tool. Consult the SBTI website at sciencebasedtargets.org for more information about ongoing development of sectoral tools and target setting methods. We hope this demonstration helps with your target setting journey, and we look forward to receiving your target submission soon.